In a previous video, we attempted to grab uh, each of these three cubes and place them in a corner here on the mat, and we had a terrible time doing that. And part of the reason for that was that we were limited to viewing the action from a single perspective. And what I mean by that here is if I hit play and drive the robot, our view doesn't change as the robot traverses the mat. And that's kind of a problem when we're trying to do something as complicated as this. So I'm going to hit the stop button to restore the simulation back to its original point. And we're going to talk a little bit about camera controls and tracking options, which are two tools available to us to help us navigate around uh, 3D space. So let's start with um, the camera controls. They're up here on the top right hand side of this screen. And we basically have four um, options available to us. Some of these will be quite familiar to you if you've done any kind of 3D modeling or PC gaming in the past. Um, perhaps the most intuitive of the four tools to use here is the look option. And if I right click and move the mouse left and right, up and down, you can see how um, the camera that we're viewing the project through um, changes direction. Now we're still sitting in a fixed point. We haven't moved the camera, but we're able to tilt the camera to look at what it is we wish to see. Now, if I wish to move the camera, physically move it to a different position in 3D space, I have to do what's called trucking the camera. Now, if you've ever seen a Hollywood movie set where they have a camera on rails and it's following the action, that's what trucking is. So I'm gonna demonstrate what this looks like. I'm gonna hold down the left control key and right click and here you can see I'm trucking the camera. I'm actually physically moving the camera to a different position here in the project file. Of course, I can orbit the camera as well. And what that does is it allows me to orbit the camera around a selected object or fixed point in the project file. So in this particular instance, my Mindstorms robot is selected. If I hold down the left Alt key, and right click, you can see how the camera orbits uh, around the robot. And if I were to select one of these cubes and make that the selected object, you can see now how, let's change it to this cube. You can see how I can right click and hold down the left Alt key. And now I'm orbiting around the cube. So we orbit um, around whatever the selected object is. Lastly is I can zoom in and out using the middle mouse scroll wheel if you happen to have a scroll wheel on your mouse. And what we're doing here is we're scrolling again relative to the selected object. So in this case, I have the cube that's selected and that's the reference object that we're zooming in and out from. If I choose the robot, you're going to see that we're going to zoom um, relative to the robot. Now camera controls are great, uh, but they don't tell the whole story and you're going to see what I mean uh, by that in a second here. I'm going to hit play. I'm going to attempt to grab one of these cubes. So let's just drive the robot. And life's a little easier because I can use my camera control so I can zoom in. I can truck the camera so that I'm looking at it at an angle that's attractive. I might want to orbit my view so that I can see things sort of from the robot's perspective. And things are a little bit easier but they're not perfect um, and one of the issues here is that if I am successful in grabbing this block so this is always the trick here let's change my view okay let's see if this is any okay so I am successful I have the cube and that's great but if my robot now goes to deposit this cube in this corner and goes for the other cubes and leaves the scene, I can't see what has happened, right? So we can see here the robot has left the scene and it's very difficult to work with just camera controls alone. And this is where tracking options um, make things a lot easier for us. Our tracking options can be found here under the main camera and this little gear or cog icon if I give that a click, I'll get a set of tracking options and it allows the camera to follow a selected object. So what I have here is I have my robot selected. So I'm going to choose set target object. 
And now if I have this follow setting on as a tracking type, the camera is going to move with the robot. And if I reorient myself by playing with the orbit here, we get a lot closer to um, the kind of camera tracking we would see in a video game. So let's talk about the different types of tracking types that are available to us. Um, follow is the easiest one to use, I think, and the most intuitive. Uh, and what we can see here, if I let the mouse hover, is that the camera will move and turn with the target object. Let's see if that's true. I'm going to go left and go right. And yes, that is indeed the case. The camera moves with the robot. I can choose tether, and there's a very subtle difference between tether and follow. When we tether the camera, the camera will move with the target object, but it won't change its orientation. So let's see what that looks like here. So I'm driving, and then I decide to turn left. So our camera is still facing um, in the original direction that the robot was traveling in. It does not change when the robot uh, changes course. Whereas if I come back to follow, now the camera turns left and right when the robot turns left and right. So a subtle difference, but an important difference. Lastly, I have look at and look at um, the look at tracking option is very similar to the look camera control. And what I mean by that is in this option, the camera will follow the robot, but it will stay in a fixed position. So again, the analogy of having the camera on a tripod and swiveling to follow the robot, that's look at. So those are your tracking options. Um, my advice to you is practice, practice, practice. Um, the better and more proficient you come with uh, playing with tracking options and camera controls, uh, the easier time you're going to have in the various project files here in the sim because you'll find that frequently you need to rely on these two tools extensively to be able to get your work done. Uh, this is especially true if you're using teleopt, so you're controlling the robot with either your keyboard or a game controller. Um, this becomes less of a factor when we look at creating autonomous behaviors using the LEGO Mindstorms programming environment.